Good evening, morning, afternoon, freaks and geeks. This is Reluge, and this is finally personal stories. Now, I haven't done this for quite a while because various things, mainly my uh, health from COVID. Um, also, time is also a factor. Also, if you notice, instead of a face cam, I decided to do the virtual space. This is my virtual space. Uh, I know there's like this program through the Oculus link that I can create my own. But uh, it's, I'm having trouble loading it into my computer. I need a new video card. Now I'll be able to start playing. There's a cat right there. Scratching at the floor. Thinking that's going to be covering its poop. Um, I would love to do my personal stories in virtual space now. Maybe because this is so relaxing and beautiful. And it's like, come, sit, pull up a chair, listen to my stories. Uh, but, oh, and look, you got a comfy couch over there. There's some chairs, there's some like uh, poker chips or what or uh, whatever. You can just sit and relax, listen to the tale, sit by the fire. I have my desk here. Uh, so, before I get into today's tale, I would like to thank Health Reader. Uh, if you don't know whom I'm talking about, then, well, thanks for being here. Uh, but I do suggest you head over to his channel. I'm going to link it in my description. Uh, oh, I, oh. Today's assignment is going to be figuring out the royalties in Game of Thrones. Who would like to start? Um, anyway, uh, I have given Health Freezer quite a few of uh, my stories and uh, he has uploaded them on or not really uploaded but uh, he's read them in far better grace and uh, acting than I can I, he's, he does really good voices I mean oh my god it's real good so anyway, um, and also he's given me quite a few shout outs, which is oh so kind of him. And I actually owe my recent uh, breaking of 100 subscribers to him. And I know it's like, oh, 100 subscribers, that's nothing. And I know, but it's a lot more than I expected when I started this over 10 years ago to almost 20 now and that is insane so without I can't have my hands together it's like this is as far as I can have my hands whoa whoa <laughs> So, I have a lot of personal 
stories I need to get caught up on. First though, I'm going to be doing a second volume of my uh, dream catalog. Because the first one I did was recent dreams I had was at that point. This time, I figured I would be doing reoccurring dreams. Uh, this is one of the reasons why it's taken me this long to do this particular one, because the first dream I wanted to do a, like, animation for it. I kind of want to call it a graphic animation because it'd be something like the comic book uh, animations that you see where it's like they take like the still frame and they sort of move it, they sort of animate it. But Instead, I would just take the images in enemy in that way. Uh, but there are certain things I couldn't find or do. I might still sit down and try to make the animation for this. So here's my childhood then it wasn't recurring but when I noticed uh, a certain aspect of the dream it became reoccurring which I found to be weird so and if you don't know any of the things I'm talking about uh, you could look them up ask your mother uh, or your father or something. So, here we go. Dream starts. A billboard. It was the Coca-Cola from a board game uh, Double Crossing. Except for instead of the usual Cobra icon that was in there, it's Rattler from He-Man drinking on a soda. Pops out of the billboard and he's falling through the air and he lands on symbols from Mario Brothers like Cloud, there's like the star, coin, and when he lands on them they disappear. He lands on the ground. And then he starts just running around and jumping onto people's shoulders. When he lands on their shoulders, they shrivel up into the things, those little uh, black uh, things from uh, the Little Mermaid. Okay? And so he's running around doing this for a few minutes. Then... There's like this mountain with a cave, and I'm in the cave, and I'm with a person, another guy. And I step forward in the mountain, I look into a pool, and then I turn around, I see one note, and then the dream is done. Looking back, the one note, strangely, ah, uh, I think... It, my brain pulled it from this uh, very old Christmas special. Uh, what's it called? I forgot what it was called, but uh, it was like a really old claymation of how Santa Claus became Santa Claus. It was like answering all these uh, questions like, 
Why does his reindeer fly? Uh, why does he have a red suit? Uh, there was this one time when it was on air. Oh, wow. song that the the girl sings, I forgot her name, I think it was like Sarah, the one that is his uh, romantic interest, but she was like singing a song about how she feels about Chris Kringle, and for some reason they decided to cut the song out, but they cut out the entire song except for one note. And it was her turning around, looking into the uh, well to like sing the next uh, verse. And it was just, she turns around, ah, and then it's done. So, what caused this dream to become reoccurring? Like, I would dream it again and then again. When I got, it was, it's like a couple years later, I got to uh, camp. And this is where I met my friend Zephyr. And uh, we're hanging out, and it's like a couple days into camp, and I have this dream again. And that's where I realized that the person looked just like Zephyr. Now, I know this could just have been my brain just placing the face in it, but it looked so similar to what it was before. And the whole time I was there, the dream came up now and then. So, that was the, that's the funny reoccurring. These next two dreams, though, were quite freaky. One of them I did send to Hellfreezer, but that was because this dream, I feel, has something to do with the Asylum Lake. Uh, that Al, Alan and I tried to investigate. Uh, I called him Ink on Freezer's story. So Ink equals Alan. Okay, so the first thing you need to keep in mind. I'm no longer... This is the... This dream and the previous dream I'm no longer continuously having. So, this dream starts out, these two kids are running from someone, a boy and a girl, I think they're both teenagers. They're running through a forest, or woods, it's, it's just a lot of trees and it's hilly uh, there are men chasing them shouting uh, the most of the words I can make out is like stop uh, like we'll uh, stop or shoot um, there's also dogs barking the girl winds up going up a hill. The boy is down on like ground floor. And uh, the dream follows the boy. The girl goes up and you can hear her shouting. And it's like panic shouting. The boy calls out Sarah to no reply 
Uh, so the, the group of uh, men or people, what soldiers? Guards? I have no idea. But uh, they split up and continue chasing vultures. Uh, the kid, the boy jumps over kind of like a broken fence. Like the fence is up. And it was like the, one of the poles was bent. Like that. <laughs> and uh, so like the netting part of the fence was bent down. So he could easily like grab the top and jump over. In fact, it, it was bending like it has happened before. Uh, he stumbles a little, but he's continuously, but he's still running. Uh, he can hear dogs from, like, either side of him. There's a log. He jumps over the log and into water. Apparently, he can't swim. And so he's kind of, like, dog paddle drowning away from the land and the uh, people come and they stop at the shore with the dogs and they had rifles and uh, that's where the dream ends now before it was like a progression like at first it would just start with just me running like I was looking it was like in my perspective just running through forest, hearing noises behind me. Then it would gradually go into like seeing the boy and then seeing the uh, uh, people chasing him, hearing the dogs, hearing a few words. And then there was like the girl. And it progressed up until the point where he jumps in the water. I have no idea what happened to these kids. Like, after this point of the dream. Um, Alan suggested that because I have had premonition dreams, those are coming up in the next uh, uh, dream, my dream catalog, that, actually, did I already tell those? I should check that. Anyway, um... That what I'm seeing is like possibly something that's going to happen to somebody. Um, but when we went to do the investigation of the Silent Light, mm -hmm. I even had like a camera. He had his camera. Uh, we were doing like a full investigation. And, uh, we decided to go down to one of the trails that we have not walked on. We're walking down that trail. And uh, we noticed that there's like this fence laying down on the floor. And so we're interested. This is like, oh, hey, uh, how old is this fence? Uh, is it like, was it there when the asylum was up? Was it there after the asylum uh, closed? Because it was a... Uh, it was an insane asylum once. They had like a farm going on. Uh, so I'm pretty sure they had to have like a fence to prevent people from escaping. Uh, it looked severely rusted and it was mostly buried by like trees and vines and actual and some dirt. But there was this one bit of the fence that still was bent and like the post was bent similar to what was in my dream and so while I was investigating this which Alan did not know I had turned around and I saw a tree branch like a tree trunk I don't think it was the same one because in the dream he jumped over it and landed in the water this tree trunk was not near the water 
But uh, the Alan saw a figure running away from us. Which I, I felt bad since I was investigating the area. I didn't catch that on tape. Pissed me off. But I fought, we followed where he saw the figure go and it led to the lake. Now in my dream it was at night. Everything was dark. But the edge of the lake was very familiar. Like similar to the dream I had. So, I'm wondering if it wasn't a future event I saw, but something from the past. And from that, Alan suggested a past life experience. Now, I know a lot of people just groaned at that. I'm not saying it is definitely like, like I'm seeing a uh, past life experience, but... It was very similar to the area that I personally didn't see before then. And uh, that's what makes that dream a bit creepy. But, that's, I'm not holding up, I'm not holding up my fingers. What? <laughs> Having troubles tracking my fingers. Uh, uh, uh. Come on, do the demon hands. Huh? Nope, nope. <laughs> so, anyway, the last room I'm going to be talking about in this episode is the one that is the creepiest because I have no idea what's going on. So, this is going to take a lot to explain, but it only happens in, like, moments. I don't want to say minutes, because I don't know how many. So, the scene. Everything is grayscale. The floor is made out of cobblestone, pretty much. Like, there was no uniform way of putting the floor together. It's like, alright, just put stone here, cover it with, or, uh, um, yeah, cover it with the, uh, um, mortar, and then sand off the top, and there is your floor. Uh, so, and this room was, like, circular, kind of. Like, what would you would expect in, like, one of those round towers. There was, like, steps at the, uh, like, at the walls. But they weren't really leading up to anywhere. They were just there, I think, for aesthetics. However, in a half circle. There sat six thrones made out of stone. And each stone sat a cloaked figure with gray robes. They each were sitting like this, but I couldn't see their fingers. I saw a finger indents in like the sleeves of the robes, but their robes covered their hands. And it also covered their face. And also their legs. It's like all you could see was a robe. I could see kind of like facial features. But it was all shrouded in like shadows. And so they're each sitting there in their throne. And they're just like looking at each other. And they're speaking to each other. In a language I do not know. And it's not a made up gibberish language like Simlish. Like, I'm not really in the mall. 
see it. It was something like Eru's Dama son. Something like that. And it was kind of guttural. Like, they were throwing emphasis on a lot of, like, the sounds. But it more, it flowed. I can't explain it well. But it definitely wasn't Japanese. I don't think it was German. It was not Spanish. Ah. Uh, I think that's all the languages that I've heard. Oh, um, Russian. It definitely wasn't Russian. Because I would recognize the words. Like, not be able to, like, translate it. But I would be able to recognize the style of the language. And if you're asking how could that happen, it's like, Umf and Rammstein for German. I know how the German words sound. And then Russian for with uh, Top 2 and a few other like Russian movies I've watched. And then Japanese, well, anime. So. <sighs> and again, I'm, I'm not saying I, I know what they're saying. Like the different languages, but I, I, I can recognize if it's Japanese or German or Russian. And that's pretty much the extent of the dream. Just them looking at each other, speaking in this language, and they're like having, holding like a huge conversation with this language and there's two things that scare me about this uh, dream. First thing, I brought this up with Zephyr. He asked me if they were wearing crowns. I tell him no, they're not. There's no symbol of royalty anywhere on them. So he's kind of relieved. And he told me about like the uh, six kings wearing six crowns sitting in six thrones. The whole six, six, six. So I paid close attention whenever I had the dream again and there was nothing else in there to symbolize six. So it's only two sixes. So I don't think it's that. But the fact that he was able to draw that into a biblical sense is kind of freaky to me. But the second thing is, I still have this dream to this day. I can't find anywhere on the internet about what this dream could mean. Like any secret uh, meaning behind like grayscale, uh, the fact that it's six people talking in a different language. And every single person I talk to has a different theory on this dream. Someone even asked if one of them was me. I can't tell you if it was or not. Uh, pretty much I have five children. One of them is not, didn't like come up from me. So that's four children that are mine. So there's the, the five that we're raising. One's already an adult. But then there's his friend, my adult son's friend, that uh, we pretty much welcomed into our home. And uh, we're helping him get on his feet. He's an adult as well. And then there's another child from Zephyr's uh, 
life. Uh, I don't want to get into the circumstance yet, but uh, pretty much she had become my child as well. And so with that, her brother would also have become pretty much my child. And if 5 plus 3 is 8, then uh, I don't think it's counting the children that I have. So, I mean, one can argue about, like, me, porn, and then the four kids that are from me. But then if you're going to add corn, you got to add John. And then, if you're adding the spouse, like the mother of the children, you got to add my ex as well. And so that becomes eight again. Can't count my friends. Four of them are deceased. And the ones that are living are pretty much out in pretty much the world, pretty much, pretty much. So it can't be me and friends, especially since it's like, which five of the friends are you going to pull out? Because there's, there's four that's diseased, deceased. But then if you're going to count like a fifth one that's going to die and then me going to die and then it's like the six of us in the circle there. Two of those friends aren't that good of friends to be like, yeah, you're you're here in this uh, dead cult with me. So. I don't know. And yeah, this, this last stream has been on my mind a lot because it's still happening. I'm still dreaming it. It's so concerning. So if you have any idea on these dreams, go ahead, let me know in the description in the comment section down below. Um if I do want to do a lot of VR games for my channel. Because I love this technology. This is awesome. And that cat is still scratching at something. So, there's some games that I've played in the past that are VR capable. There's some that I do plan on playing anyway. But once I'm able to get my Oculus hooked up to my computer and working, I plan on playing some of those games. Now, here's the thing. I am going to be putting a poll into my Discord. And you all get to vote. I'm not just which game I've played before that I could do in VR, but some games that I have in my library that I haven't played yet. That I can play in VR. And if you want, if there's a different game you want to see me play in VR, then I am going to put an other category. And pretty much, if more people vote on the other category, for one, if I'm going to have to have money to buy that. But, you. You would like, if you want to vote other, put down what game you want to see me play that's not on my list. And then if more people, yes, I'm going to plug it in soon. And if more people vote other than the other ones, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a second voting and have you vote which one was suggested that I should do. Uh, there's no time limit on this because 
for one, I don't know if anybody's going to go on my Discord vote for this. I only have like a hundred uh, viewers with a con still a consistent like five viewer count. So, this is a good chance to determine what happens on a cha on a YouTuber's channel. And I might just uh, shout out to the people that won the vote too. So I don't know. So. That is it for this episode. Subscribe if you'd like to hear more. Or if you'd like to catch any of the other series that I've been doing. Uh, let me know. Do you like the Sinta stories? In this VR setting. Although I'm about to punch a cat across the room. Um, not really. Or do you like seeing my face while I'm telling stories? Or... Do you like how, like, the uh, formula that has been going on lately? Like, doing a, uh, pic just having a picture on the screen that resembles what you're talking about. Uh, let me know how you prefer these kind of stories. Um, I still kind of want to read other people's stories, but I'm not going to do that unless I have a lady uh, voicing it with me because I really I still really want to do it in like the perspective of the voice of the uh, author like if it's a fe female my lady friend or even corn would be reading it. If it's from the male perspective, it would be from me. I really like that idea. And I want to do that to up the game. So to speak. So let me know what you think of that. Uh, share this with your family, your friends, your cats that are scratching at the floor. Excuse me. And until next time, stay cozy. Vampire. You can't tell by my hands together. <laughs>